subscription payments are one of the most effective ways to monetize your software. In this episode, we're going to use the Stripe Payments API along with Angular, Firebase, and Cloud Functions to build a subscription model into an app. By the end of this video, you'll be able to accept credit cards through your front-end Angular app, and then save information about the subscription in the Firebase database, and handle recurring payments with Stripe webhooks. I have to warn you that this video covers a lot of code in a very short amount of time, so I recommend going to angularfirebase.com to follow along with the source code and get additional content related to Stripe payments. So first things first, you'll need to have a Stripe account, which you can get at stripe.com. Then retrieve your test API key and add it to your environment.ts file in Angular. Then we're going to add the Stripe Checkout JS library to the index.html file. It goes in the head tag and it allows us to collect credit card details, then send them back to Stripe. Then the last thing we need to do is tell TypeScript about Stripe. So we go to the typings.d.ts file and then just declare a variable called Stripe Checkout. From here, we'll initialize cloud functions in our project using the Firebase CLI, so we run Firebase init functions. From there, we also need to set our Stripe test key in the functions environment, so we can do that by running Firebase functions, config, set, Stripe test key with your test key in there. Then we'll cd into the functions directory and install the Stripe npm package. We do that with npm install stripe save, and this allows us to communicate with the Stripe API from our Node.js cloud functions environment. Okay, so that wraps up the initial setup. Now we can actually start building this subscription model. Before we can create a subscription, we need to create a customer in Stripe. It's easiest if you create that customer as soon as your user signs up for your app. So we're going to create a cloud function that runs as soon as a user signs up for the first time, and it's going to save the Stripe customer ID in this customer's node on the database. The Stripe customer ID will be the key, and the Firebase user ID will be the value. This data structure is going to come into play later when we start using webhooks to handle recurring payments. And we're also going to duplicate this data on the user object itself. So you can see here under the user ID, we have the customer ID as well. If you're lost at this point, make sure to check out some of my videos covering user authentication with Firebase. Now we're going to jump into the functions index.js file and build this first cloud function. So first we're going to initialize the function with the admin database. Then we'll initialize the Stripe library with the API key that we had configured in the environment earlier. Then we're going to call this function create Stripe customer, and it's going to run whenever a new user signs up. Firebase has a built-in auth trigger called onCreate that will run this function whenever a new user signs up. When it runs, it's going to give us access to this event variable, which just contains the user auth data. Then we're going to return a Stripe promise by calling Stripe customers create. And then to create a customer, all we have to do is pass it an email address. Then once that promise resolves with Stripe, it's going to return a customer object. And what we want to do with this customer object is save it in the Firebase database but we have two different locations to save it at. So we're gonna create an updates object here. And first we're gonna save the user ID on the customer's node. Then we'll do the inverse of that by saving the customer ID on the user's node. We structure the update like this so it either succeeds or fails together. This is known as an atomic update or fan out in Firebase. So to make the update, we just reference the root database and pass it this updates object. From here, you can deploy the function and then go test it out by signing up a new user and you should see the customer's node and the user node be updated with the corresponding data. Now that we have that done, I'm going to create a service that will save the payment token to Firebase when the user enters their credit card details. So first we're going to need the Angular Fire database and Angular Fire auth services. And then we're also going to import switch map and do from RxJS. Then I'm going to set a variable for the current user's ID and also a observable of their membership status in the database. To get the membership status, we first need to call the Angular Fire auth state observable. And then once we have that, we're just going to set the user ID on the service itself. And then we'll call switch map and use the user's ID to retrieve their membership in the database. So we can do that by calling object users user ID and then we're going to save it under the pro membership. Eventually the pro membership node will have the current status of their membership as well as the next payment date. When a user enters their credit card details through Stripe checkout, it will send us back a payment token. 
we need to save this payment token in the Firebase database and then trigger a cloud function whenever it's updated. So for now, we'll just save it directly under the pro membership under that user's ID. Okay, now we can create a component that will be responsible for collecting the user's credit card information. First, we will import the payment service that we just created, and then we'll go ahead and import our environment variables, which have the Stripe API key. Then we'll create a variable for the handler and inject the payment service in the constructor. Then we'll configure the handler during ng on init, and we can do that by calling stripe checkout configure, then pass it an object of different configuration options. The important thing is the key, which is the stripe API key, then token, which takes a callback function after stripe sends us the token back. Once we have that token, we can use our payment service to save it to the Firebase database. Now that we have it configured, we just need an event handler that allows the user to open it. So we can call this handler open and then pass a few variables here which describe what they're paying for. In this case, it's a pro subscription and the amount is 1500, which translates to 15 US dollars in this case. In the component HTML, we can reference the payment membership observable and we'll set that as a template variable called pro in this case. If the pro status is not active, then we wanna go ahead and show the payment button then when the user clicks that button, it will open the Stripe event handler. And then while we're in here, we'll check and see if the user has an active membership. And if so, we'll just show a div here showing that the subscription is active. This is a very simplistic approach. In the real world, you probably wanna show a payment history as well as an option to cancel and other little convenience features like that. So now we'll enter some card details and we're just using a test credit card from Stripe. Once the payment completes, we should see the token being saved here under the pro membership under that user's account. So it looks like that's working fine. Now we just need a, another cloud function to build the subscription once this event happens. To do that, go over to your Stripe account dashboard and make sure you're viewing the test data. Then go to subscriptions and plans, and we're just going to create it manually. Although I should note you can create these plans programmatically, which is especially useful if your users can customize their own plans. Now we can jump back to the index.js file and create a cloud function that will add a customer to this subscription plan. The function name will be create subscription. Then we'll run the function whenever the user's user ID pro membership token is updated. So that'll happen when the user enters their card detail and we want to build the subscription and charge the customer. This is going to give us an event variable, which we can use to retrieve the token value that we've already saved to the database. In this case, we can get the token value by calling event data val. Then we'll also save the user ID as a variable here, and we can throw an error if any of this essential data is missing. Okay, the next step is to query the admin database for the actual user data. So we reference user's user ID, pull that value once, and then have the snapshot resolve into a promise. And once we have that data back from Firebase, we can call stripe subscriptions create, which we need to provide a Stripe customer ID as well as a source for the payment, which in most cases would be a credit card. In our case, we save the customer ID when the user first signed up, then we save the credit card token ID in the last step. When you create a subscription, you have an array of items. So in our case, we're just gonna add the pro membership item, but you could also add like a setup fee or any customized options you want here as well. This is going to return a promise and on Stripe's end, they're going to create a subscription and also charge the customer. If the charge fails, it will raise an error. So once we get the subscription back, we can go ahead and reference the user's pro membership in Firebase. And then we'll just go ahead and update it to active, but there's all kinds of additional data you could save here if you wanted to. And the final step will be to catch any errors, and that should be it for our subscription cloud function. You can go ahead and deploy it, and then if you go charge the card again, you should see the pro membership updated, and then the subscription turned to active. So if we look at the object, it has a status of active as well as our token that we saved there before. Then we can also go into Stripe and we should be able to see the subscription saved there as well. So going into the Stripe dashboard, we can see this user is subscribed to the pro membership and then we have a history of their payments and any other activity here as well. So that's pretty cool, but there's still one more piece to the puzzle that we still haven't solved and that's handling recurring payments as they happen asynchronously once a month. Stripe uses webhooks as a way to send data to your app. So once a month, they're going to charge the user's card and then they'll send the data to a webhook that you provide, 
A webhook is just a URL where you can receive the data and then run some code in response to it. We can handle this with Firebase HTTP cloud functions. The end result's going to look like this. We'll send a test payment failed webhook, and then it's going to update the user's pro membership to pass due. And then if we get a payment succeeded webhook, it updates it back to active. Let's go back to index.js and create the cloud function that will handle this logic. Let's give the function a name of recurring payment and we'll make it an HTTPS function, which is going to return a requ request and a response. So first with the request, we need to get the request body type as well as the request body data object. And that's just the data that is being sent to us from Stripe. It has things like the customer's customer ID as well as the subscription status. And we'll go ahead and throw an error if any of this data is missing. Then Stripe is not going to send us the Firebase user ID, but it is going to send us the Stripe customer ID. That's why we saved it on its own customer node that points to the Firebase user ID. So we can reference that customer ID, and then with that data, we can update the data on the actual Firebase user ID. So once we get the user ID, we'll make a reference to that point in the database. And there's two possible hooks here. We can either have a payment succeeded or a payment failed. So we'll just use a conditional if statement. And if the invoice payment succeeded, then we'll just go ahead and update the status to active. And then likewise, if the payments failed, then we'll go ahead and update the status to past due. This is a pretty simplistic approach and Stripe sends all kinds of other webhooks that you can listen for. So check out the docs to see the full customization options. Now, the last thing we need to do is send a response back to Stripe. If we send a 200 response, that means we received it and we updated the database and everything's good to go. We can also send a 300 or 400 level response, which Stripe will treat as an unsuccessful request. And in that case, Stripe will try to retry the webhook a certain number of times. You can configure the retry attempts in the Stripe dashboard. Go ahead and deploy the function, but this time make note of the URL that it returns from you for this recurring payment function. From the Stripe dashboard, you'll want to go to API and then webhooks and then add an endpoint. You can just uh, copy and paste this URL directly in the endpoint. And then we're going to go down here and select the invoice payment succeeded and invoice payment failed options. Then click add endpoint and Stripe will start sending webhooks to that address. Now, when we start testing this webhook, Stripe's going to send it to a customer with all zeros. So we're going to go in the Firebase database and just point that test customer to our current user that we're working with. From here, you can click on test webhook from the Stripe dashboard and choose the type of request you want to send. So in this case, we'll first send a payment failed request. And you can see that changes the status to pass due. Then we can do the same thing for payment succeeded, and we should see the status updated back to active. If you get any errors at this point, it's always a good idea to look at the Firebase function logs, and you can see exactly what kind of error is happening inside your function. So that's just barely scratching the surface of the possibilities of Stripe subscription payments. If this video helped you, please like and subscribe. And if you want to talk about building your own custom subscription system, consider becoming a pro member at angularfirebase.com. You'll get a free copy of my book as well as one-on-one -on -one project consulting. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.